Welcome to LeapCast. I'm your host, Dr. George James. LEAP stands for leaders, entertainers, athletes, and performers. And I'm on a journey to connect with high achievers and highlight their unexamined human moments. Tune in to learn how these high achieving LEAP individuals were able to reach their greatest potential, face their most difficult challenges, and embrace the human moments that helped them along the way. If you want to get the episode highlights directly in your email, then head to theleapcast.com right now to subscribe. Everybody, this is Dr. George James, and welcome to LeapCast, where we talk to leaders, entertainers, athletes, and performers. I am excited. I am hyped to bring on my guest today. His name is Major, a recording artist, Grammy nominated, has done lots of great things. And probably if you got married any time in the past five years, you might have played one of his songs to get married. Major, thanks for joining me, man. Brother, brother, Dr. George, you are a king, a scholar. You are a noble man. It's an honor to have this moment with you. Um, I'm so grateful for the time recently that we have had to build and to get to know each other. Um, honored to be here, man. Let's talk. I appreciate it. And so, as Major just said, we were able to connect. We did a fireside chat for Black men at this a well-known company. And, you know, it was just an awesome conversation. And I'm glad we connected. And I'm glad that you're here. And so the way that we like to start is by getting into what we call the leap story. We just really want to hear more about you and your journey. How did you even get to where you are? And we'll, we'll talk through lots of different aspects. But take us to the beginning. Tell us, like, how did this all start for you? Three years old, Houston, Texas my hometown. I told my mama I wanted to be an international superstar. I told her I also wanted to be a pastor. Um, I think I've done the due diligence to uh, scratch the surface on both. Uh, but uh, I, I, I don't know exactly how the pastor thing is going to unfold, but I definitely will say I'm about my father's business in being uh, committed to just blessing humanity with this conversation of hope and really inspiring people to live their best lives. Um, I went to performing arts schools all my life, um, grew up in a blended family. It was 10 siblings, uh, seven boys, three girls. Well, and <laughs> how, how did y'all manage all of that? L listen, I didn't manage it. I, well, I, I managed myself, you know, but uh, no, <laughs> no, I, it, it definitely made me who I am uh, today. It definitely taught me diversity. <laughs> it definitely uh, showed me how important it was for me to stand on, you know, my my belief on thing and my perspective, just really owning my voice, you know, because when you're amongst many, you know, it takes that 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 sense of I matter, my voice matters to really be able to uh, weather, um, you know, that day to day. <laughs> but Ken, where were you in the mix? Were you like fourth. old, fourth, fourth? In the, the kind of middle, you know, kind of, oh. yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I, I love it. Um, we're kind of like Brady Bunch a little, you know, my parents uh, got married with kids together and then, um, uh, then had, additional once they got married so um yeah we're we're you know we're the the urban brady bunch <laughs> well, that's cool well so when you were three uh international uh recording artist superstar i said superstar. superstar let's be clear all right, all right. <laughs> okay because, i mean you know i knew that i wanted to sing i knew that i also liked acting um at a young age and so it has been an unfolding of that along the way. I went to the Berkeley College of Music in Boston um, after attending um, some pretty prestigious uh, performing arts schools. One, my high school was the high school for the performing and visual arts, which uh, produced- well, I'm in Philly, right? So we have a school out here called Kappa, right? Which is one of those performing arts schools. Yeah. You know, Voice to Men, that's where they hung out, right? Absolutely. So that was a Houston version of it? Listen, let me let me make something clear. Kappa was a uh, a Philly version of Houston. So let's <laughs> let's be clear here. When they made fame, that. when they made fame, they they consulted with us. Okay. You know, okay. LaGuard LaGuardia consulted with us to really get a more rounded <laughs> perspective. They went to Houston, um, H Town. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, that some of the esteemed alumni include uh, Brian Michael Cox, a very pro uh, popular producer, um, Matthew Mullenweg, the creator of WordPress, um, uh, Robert Glasper, um, an incredible musician, and um, Beyonce, you know, just a modest singer that you, I don't know if you've heard of her. If, you, if not, she's talented, just know that. Some album out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So then after leaving HSPBA, that's the acronym for it, um, I went, I did an intensive with the uh, Houston Grand Opera and also with the Juilliard School before attending Berkeley College of Music, where I was pretty active and uh, got my degree um, and moved to LA. And now we're here. And you know, when you say all of that, you know, it just makes me think about, you've been honing your craft for a minute, right? Okay. And and not, there's so many talented people out there. I mean, regardless of field, whether it be sports, entertainment, music, people who just like, man, God blessed you with all of that. And you ain't, you ain't doing nothing with it. And so I, I'm wondering, like for you, when did you realize I needed to put some work into it to get me to the next level? Well, I have to shout out my mom because the moment I told her that that's what I wanted to do, was a moment she says, okay, so we're gonna work on it. We're gonna work on it. And she was just really big on, don't step into a ring unless you're ready to win, you know? Unless you, you're you ready to take home the win. And so uh, she she was really big on digging and, and perfecting the craft and just being great at whatever you committed your heart and your mind to. So, so yeah. Shout out to mom all the way. Shout out to my mama. <laughs> and she's she's responsible for naming me major. So, you know, I gotta I gotta crown her. Yeah. So so I mean, maybe people know this, maybe people don't. So so major is actually your name. That is not your that state. That is my legal, that is my legal name. Now, the way I stylize it with all caps and a period, yeah. um, uh, that's that's more of you know my own creativity, but it's M A J O R Major Johnson Finley. That's who I is. <laughs> That's awesome, <laughs> I man. I just go by Major. It took me a while to embrace and accept a name so different. Yep. You know, it wasn't common. You know, when we get older, that's when we start, you know, we're proud to say, my name means, you know, right. so yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you what it means in the Greek. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, I feel like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's great that you embrace that uh, and have embraced that over the years. And uh, so let me go back to the other thing you said, right? You said an international superstar, right? Yeah. And you said a pastor at yeah. three. So tell me about those two. Those are two worlds that could be combined and could yeah. be separate. My family, uh, you know, were very active in the church. Uh, my uncle was the pastor of my home church. Um, and I admired how he impacted so many. I watched as droves of people would come into, you know, come and gather on a Sunday and stand in line to speak with him just to get his insight, his advice and, and how their lives would be changed. And they're sharing that testimony service. And I was like, I, I get, I connect. And I, I saw empathy at work and I am an empath by nature. Of course, I didn't have that language then, but I was always just drawn to that. And, you know, as a singer, seeing a lot of folks on TV from Michael Jackson to Whitney Houston, CeCe Winans, I was like, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. And, you know, uh, it was, it was a blessing to have a, uh, a mom in particular, my stepdad was very pivotal, but you know, my mom from birth, you know, just really wanting to make the best, you know, out of our experience and our journey. So, yeah. So, well, first of all, shout out to that because that's one of the reasons why I wanted to wear this shirt. Just uh, trust God and chill. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on. I, I figured that was a part of you. So I figured I'd just kind of like talk through that, that part and we'll get into that some more. Were there other like creatives, performers, singers in your family? I mean, you got 10. I mean, y'all could have had a group, a band, like we anything. All, we all, um, all of the kids that, uh, that my mom gave birth to, she made sure we all had some type of musical um, uh, 
uh, proficiency. Like we, you know, we had to take on an instrument. And so for me, I also took on piano, but it didn't last. It didn't last. I, 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 <laughs> I also took on a trumpet. That didn't last. Okay. He actually wrote a letter to my mom and said, Major is a singer, okay? Uh, Major's a singer. Let's, yeah, let's keep him with the choir. And so, uh, you know, she, my brother uh, plays, um, ex played vibraphones, xylophone. Um, my other brother, uh, drums, percussion. Another brother played saxophone. Two of them played saxophone. Another, my sister played piano and my other brother played was that trumpet yeah i think trumpet so yeah right yeah, so right there was, i'm the one that took it okay i took it further yeah okay and and i guess that also makes me think about like at, along the way right we have these journeys maybe we feel connected to something maybe we feel it's a calling maybe we just gifted and talented and we start pursuing it. Shout out to mom who's like, look, you're going to do the work to, to step in the ring. Yeah. When did you feel like you got that first feeling like I'm, I'm moving in the right direction? Um, eight years old I was my first like paid gig. Um, I hey. remember, yeah, I remember having to sing for this um, company called uh, Slumber J Oil. It's an oil company, their Christmas party. And I sang for that. And they actually, no, that wasn't the first. I was a second. And I was probably like 12 then. But the first was with the UNCF. Yeah, I had to sing for their fundraisers. So, I mean, listen, I've been, I'm telling you, I've been at this thing for a long time. And you know, the cool thing is when you're strong at something, people want to pay to get more of it, you know? So, uh, you know, I was willing to do a lot of stuff for free, but uh, my mom also was like, you can, he'll take the check. He'll take the check. <laughs> That's major with an M. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're right, that part. Well, that's awesome, right? Like, you know, to be eight and have your first paid gig and then 12, and it sounds like you just kept building from there. Yeah, like, yeah, I, it was, it was, it was quite, it was something. I, um, I was a part of a singing group called the Sounds of Creation, and we were a youth group. So, uh, eventually we started, you know, making a little money because we were, you know, recording albums and, you know, we traveled the country. And so I got to see a little of it. Um, I remember my mom not signing a record deal that I was, um, that was offered to me in the fifth grade. Um, she decided not to sign it because there was, it just, she didn't fully understand the business that way. And the person was trying to remove me from the singing group that they saw me perform with and but it was it was a pretty cool situation but you know she decided no but i would have had a, a a much different story because these guys really put in a lot of money just to to get us to meet with them so i'm curious like does that mean like they've worked with other artists or that you could have been yeah artists? um uh, they were actually going to have me sign to um, they were an agency and they were going to get, have me signed management um, to, uh, I forget the guy's name right off, but it was the uh, manager for Backstreet Boys. Okay. And so like what, you know, it was kind of like, you know, Tevin Campbell clearly was way older than I was, but like, you know, what Bieber was, they were trying to get, develop me kind of in that space. So it was, it was, it would have been interesting to see. I was excited. You know, but. you're in fifth grade, and like you said, like that when when you mentioned Bieber, yeah, he did start. Like he was doing things like almost like just double digits, right? Like yeah, real early. Yeah, yeah, it was it was wild. I mean, limousine rides. You know, imagine that as a a little kid. You know, and uh, we would go to these fancy restaurants and order whatever you want. I'm like anything. Right. Right. <laughs> And as you get older, you're like, oh, man, that was just $20. <laughs> but, I mean, it sounds like, once again, like, you know, there's a way that 
not only success, but talent and people were drawn to you from an early age. And, and you had your mom and, and family around. How did you, how did you navigate like some of the noise that comes with that? Like, you know, like when you have attention and you're in front of people and you have a gift, that's great. But there's also like some stuff that's not always easy that comes with that too. Um, you know, I, I dreamed so big that I was willing to put the work in. And while yes, there was a lot of pressure. There was a lot of, um, my mom wanted to also keep me grounded. She was big on that. She was big on the humility piece. And so imagine while you, you go to different places and everybody's screaming or clapping or standing ovation, like imagine the work you have to do on, to keep a child humble through that, you know, where, you know, while I'm at home, while, you know, we didn't come from the most affluent, affluent backgrounds financially. So we didn't have everything, but that village, man, that village took care of me. Man, that village was like, major, what you need? We, we gonna get you, the, you gonna say, no, I got you. I got you. So it was, it was, it was, I, it was a lot of tough lessons um, early on because my mom was such a stickler for that. And I thank her, you know, for, you know, being a stickler in the character department, because now that I've been exposed to what this industry really is, had I not had that character grounding, woo, I'd be a mess. And I would have taken advantage of a lot of things that were presented to me that were not good for me. Uh, I, I was actually thinking about that when you talked about this company, uh, agency that was really trying to recruit you early and you probably might not have learned some of those grounding character building lessons if they had swooped you up in fifth grade right 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 right, right. yeah it's a different trajectory maybe even different salary but you know there's always a different salary. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but there's always this thing about like at what cost, right? And and yeah. sometimes don't know. But if, and of course in those moments, because I resented my mom, I was so mad. Of course. I was so mad, you know, but she said, This is this is for your good. And I kind of also told her that I wanted to do gospel as well. So specifically saying gospel, and then you have this person that's signing you that's like, that's not what we're going to be doing here. It was just, it was just hard to accept that but i i think one of the things that she wanted to make sure it was that i didn't lose my upbringing of being a child my childhood because you know you hear the stories and at that time you know we would we learned a lot about childhood stars and you know from michael jackson to everybody how they just said they never had a childhood you know so my mom was like no he's going to he can do all that but he's also going to be a normal child. And I, 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 many times I was like, can you just let me? Uh. And, you know, I, and I hear that. Like, I can understand how you could even have that resentment and like the admiration and resentment at different times, mom looking out, especially like when you can see other people in their kind of careers and their, where they develop, but, but also like, you know, just thinking about right now, like there are ways that, young folks who are in the industry might also can homeschool or virtual school that's maybe different than maybe when you were coming yeah, up yeah, you yeah, really yeah have yeah. some of that stuff uh and that make you know maybe that makes it a little bit easier it wasn't as common it wasn't as common but going to performing arts schools we learned how to do both you know uh because you know i remember doing my first, my first commercial was for R Reynolds Rap, and I was third grade, oh, another eight, eight years old, um, working. I did, you know, a Reynolds Rap commercial, and I think I did this play in the fourth grade. Fourth grade, I did this play every year, and it was just like, I mean, we, we going to performing arts schools, I really recommend to you know to parents because it really gives you this balance ex perspective early on so that if opportunities come you're not shocked it's like no they both can be done you know so yeah 
I think that's a theme that I'm, I'm hearing from you too, is like you have balanced like multiple worlds, right? Like you're in a blended family, right? With like other like siblings, uh, you, you talk about, you know, being an international uh, superstar and being a pastor. You talked about like even the style of music that you pursued have been, you know, on some level, like maybe R&B pop, uh, but also like interest in gospel. So yeah. like, and then you talk about like acting and music. So like you've been working on multiple like worlds at the same time. So what well, has allowed you to do that? I'll say this, at, in the, at the performing arts schools, yes. I was developing those those uh, spaces. Um, once I moved out after graduating from Berkeley, because I also studied theater as well there. And so I said, when I moved to LA, um, I want to you know do music, acting, and voiceover work. That's what I was going to do. And then I realized that while I was a jack of many trades, I needed to lock in and master one to the to the degree that it starts to become a substantial um a substantial resource for me a resource provider like you know this is going to be where my well-being is is uh, taken care of and so i had to decide which um which picture I was going to pour into. And so I poured into music first and it proved to be the smart thing to do. And sure enough, it has opened up doors for me. You know, I, I, I definitely know it was music that got me, you know, my uh, TV role in the TV show star on Fox. I know that, you know, that that was one of the main reasons. Uh, and you know, being Queen Latifah's son on Star and then going on to do an, another movie and, um, you know, them wanting me because of my success as a musician. The cool thing was I wasn't one of those uh, singers that said, oh, I want to act and didn't put the work in, you know, so I I was able to really show up real strong and, you know, the work that I did on Star got me a nomination, my first um theatrical NAACP nomination for the Image Awards. And, um, you know, I did Genius Aretha, Nat Geo's Genius Series. I was Curtis Mayfield in that. And, you know, man, I'm just, I'm just showing up. I'm showing up and, and trying to put this dream to work. Oh, and you say something that I think like a lot of people uh, probably have the crossroads in their life and career, that they're skilled, talented in lots of different areas. Uh, and they can be the jack of all trades. And uh, what what told you or gave you the insight that you need to pour into one picture? Picture, like how did you figure that out? Well, I was starting to see that I was experiencing burnout. Like I'm doing all these things, but I'm like running to do all these things. And they were not necessarily paying out to the degree that I felt I was putting in. And it was like, what if, what if you locked in completely in this space? What if you locked in? What, what do you think will happen? And I'm like, I, I, I had conversations with myself. I believe you're gonna win. I believe you're gonna win. And I remember talking to another artist in the industry and I told them uh, that I'm just gonna, you know, I'm like, I have to have a regular job because I'm a left and a right brain. That's another thing that going to performing arts schools kind of did was it balanced me in that way. So I can relate to both sides and it's frustrating because that's somewhat of an anomaly. And uh, that's, that's an anomaly and so you, kind of are alien to the experience of just going all in for one or the other. And so for me, it's always been a balance. So I would see my situation and say, well, I need to get a job until I'm able to do this. And it wasn't until I talked to that artist and they said, Major, you gotta go all in. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, mark my words, everything that you're going to need 
it's going to come to you. Go all in. Give it everything so you're undeniable when the opportunity comes. And sure enough, opportunities came more and more and more. And I was living off of music alone. Even the acting stuff started coming as I was focused in on one lane. It's crazy because it's, it's like what you're destined to be will happen as long as you show up willingly. I love that. I, you know, the there's so much about us focusing on a, a certain uh, part of who we are and really building that up. And like you said, yeah. the way that you were able to do that. And, you know, I think the trick is that, like, we see so many skills and abilities that we should just, like, do it all. And yeah. But then we might be wasting time or opportunities or not fully getting to that potential. So it's awesome that you were able to do that mm -hmm. and, and, and that you recognize, like, you know, just being able to do that, to pour in and to show up and how that has expanded your world and created so many opportunities for you, which I'm just really excited to, that, that you've been able to have that so far and to share that with us. And so I'm, I'm curious for you, like, what, what has been that big moment for you? Like, as you were like, like leaning in, pouring into this picture of music, what was the, the big moment or moments that said, yeah, this was the right decision. I, am, I know I'm, I, I've not only picked the right path, but I, I leaned in at the right time. So this is um, this is how I live. I, I've I've come to learn that if I celebrate all of the wins, I'm more fulfilled than if I only celebrate the big wins. So when a person invites me to, to sing for a festival, I'm celebrating that like I'm celebrating when Stevie Wonder calls me to tell me he loves my song and he wants me to join him in concert. I'm celebrating you know, that I finally finished my album. Just like I celebrated when my song was before a while, I love you. My I, I wrote a song for Think Like a Man too. And it changed my life financially. One check. Yeah. And so I celebrate all of the different wins and that helps me stay fulfilled because what happens is when you only celebrate the big, you will find yourself feeling unfulfilled or feeling as though you're not doing anything unaccomplished until you see something that's larger. But I'm telling you, when you celebrate everything, you don't allow those, those big things to consume you and to, to become your idol because they do come and go. They come. I think that's all part of the business that people don't often realize, right? Like people who have been in the industry for a minute, they have like great moments, long stretches, and then they might have some moments that are- just Mary J. Blige literally just spoke about it. Her new album is this journey of reaffirming herself because she was at her lowest in the season prior. Mary J. Blige has music that plays everywhere. She is making money, but she went through a divorce that rocked her world, paying alimony, rocked her world, and she literally has lyrics in some of her new music that speaks to, I didn't even have enough to pay my rent. Mary J. Blige. So that's the reality that people aren't privy to. I used to be a, an assistant to a lot of high profile folks. I said, serve in the capacity you ultimately want to conquer. That was my philosophy. And I learned 
that these folks of great influence, affluence, um, accomplishment were so human. And I realized that they hurt, they go through just as much as I do. And there is, there is no escaping it, no amount of money. I remember being signed to a billionaire, a billionaire. The situation didn't work out, but I got really close to them. And I saw how life still happened to them. And so then what I realized was I'm not going to be able to escape what life deals out. It's just on me to continue building a character that properly and healthily responds to whatever the circumstances may be. And so, so there it is. That's, that's it. Well, I, I love that because like, once again, you're, you're reaffirming how important character is, how like, and it's a human journey, right? And that's one of the reasons why, you know, I started this podcast really talking to leaders, entertainers, athletes, and performers, because we do sometimes put those individuals like yourself and others that like, oh man, look what they've done. Look at how many downloads, look at how many places they go. And we fail to remember that they're human, that you're human and you go through your ups and downs like we go through our ups and downs. And then we can hear from a Mary J. Blige, if we can hear from a major, if we can hear from others that, yo, life is, has its curveballs. I've had some wins and I've learned to celebrate the small, the medium and the big wins. And I've had some like quiet moments when ain't nothing happened, nobody calling. Right, then right. It's, right. <laughs> then it's like, all right, there's like, that's, that's what I go through. And then maybe I can learn and glean from it. I can just show up. And that's what Major says. That's what Major did. That's what I'm going to do. You can say what you want about that Kanye West, but he is outwardly living mm. and showing us every dimension and space of his journey that you can actually take from to realize he's not exempt from this. He knows depression and anxiety. I start, started learning early on, this depression is not reserved for the broke. <laughs> it comes to everybody. Everybody. Everybody right. and more people than not. And we have to have more conversations to speak on it because these are the realities. And so for me, I said, I'm going to commit to helping people understand that this thing called life is going is the the inconsistencies of it is the only constant in our lives. I have a song that talks about that says way of the world and you may want to check it out. Shameless plug. Whoever is listening, whoever is watching, make sure you get you get you get hip to that major music because I talk about all this in my music. But I talk about how there's just one thing. There's a bunch of stuff that happens. You're sad, you're mad, you're glad, you're, you're depressed, you're lonely, you feel like you belong. The only thing in life, the only thing that remains the same and the sameness is simply the fact that it is inconsistent is life itself. Yeah, I mean, once again, like there's so many things, right? Like that you're saying that we recognize that like lo what life will, will throw at us. And no matter how much you guys in a bank account, no matter who you are dating or in relationship with, no matter what, who, what your name might be. And, you know, you mentioned about depression and you, you know, you and I have connected a lot about mental health. And yeah. that's definitely some things that we're going to talk a little bit further. But I, I, I guess I'll, I'm curious about, what made you start to talk more about mental health? I know that you also did your visual album. Like what, what made you say, you know what? Not enough people, not enough artists, maybe not enough people who look like me are doing this. What made you decide to do that? I knew it for myself. The pandemic really shook me in a way um, that made me respond more intentionally um and outwardly um to this push to really get people 
on a wave of taking responsibility for their mental health and wellness and being okay with not being okay. Because just because you're not okay now doesn't mean that's going to be an, uh, an always situation, a forever situation. And I also knew that I have an ability to break down the complex things and say them simply. And so I wanted to give language to how we can champion mental health. You have, man. And I, I really appreciate it that you, you've been able to do that. You know, as we said in the beginning, Major and I were on a project together for this company, particularly for Black men, just talking about mental health. And like, I love that conversation that you and I had. It, it Nobody else needed to be there. It could have been just you and I. Yeah. I was good. I walked away from yeah. good. And I, I'm so grateful for that opportunity with you, man. And like all that you've done and are doing to just highlight the stuff that we go through. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, culturally, you know, and this is something I shared on that platform, culturally, you know, we as a people have been um, only given limited space. And that space, you only get access to it if you're willing to hope. You don't get access to it if you're willing to heal. And so that public space that we've been allowed, we've been afforded to exist in, it has become almost a space that people, it's performative now. It's like, I just, I have to present well because my brokenness doesn't have any room here. It's not welcome here. And I have uh, helped people understand and the pandemic has done a number on making sure that it's clear that if you do not deal with what you feel, it will kill you. Those are bars, but this is the truth. You cannot heal what you don't reveal. And I think I wanted to help people understand, one, it's more commonplace to wrestle with the things that we wrestle with, with anxiety, with uncertainty, with fear, with um, confidence, esteem issues, with worthiness issues. And so I did this uh, Major Hope Motivations um, audio album. It's an audio album where I also did a visual uh, project to um, where I wanted to iterate uh, motivations and meditations that people can listen to and they can get new language to what they're going through. And once you have a language, I think it helps you better process what to do while in what you're in. And when you start speaking differently, your mind changes and aligns and then your circumstances follow thereafter. So my thing is, give them hopeful conversation, their mindset will be hopeful, and then their living will follow suit. I just recently um, did a segment for Good Day LA out in your way, and I was talking about the power of positivity, power of affirmations to what you're saying, right? The way of like how we need to express what's going on with us, and then we need to pay attention to what we say to ourselves and how important that is that we need to say good and hopeful and positive things. And I love your audio album that you then did some visualizations to, and then the level of like, just how you go for it, right? From, from hope. I, and I know there's like maybe about seven of them, but I remember hope, a stillness. Uh, we talked about grief or grieving. Yeah, dear griever, oh, not the so only powerful. one, you are worthy. Forgiveness, yes. forgiveness, forgiveness. Um, it, you know, man, I've been singing about it. I Why I Love You is about hope and love, understanding that this love thing is available to everyone who's willing to show up and not only receive it, but to be it. And so, you know, I speak to that. I have a song called New Day that I um, wrote with a good buddy of mine, um, and the new day speaks to understanding that 
if you simply give your all to the right now moment, you will find that tomorrow will be just fine. It's going to be just fine. Today is a new day. Reset. It's okay to recalibrate. Um, I, you know, one of the things you were talking about earlier is how did I decide, you know, and when did I decide to start championing one thing at a time? And I was realizing that just because I'm skilled at many things does not mean that I was meant to do many things, especially not all at once. And I was brought to a scripture that we often use to encourage us in our faith that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But this is what it does not say, Dr. George. It does not say I can do all things at once through Christ who strengthens me. That's right. I never said that. So when I realized that, I said, okay, bro, you got to decide. You're going to pick up this tool to do this work or are you going to look like a fool trying to carry all of them and never get anything done? Feel right. Just make a mess of everything because you can't handle it. And, and truth be told, right? Like that's a lesson I had to learn in my own life. Right. Because skilled in lots of ways, being able to be in front of people, being able to connect. I see your flag. Right. Hey, look, you know, you're Jamaican. You're Jamaican. Right? You, you taught to be able to, you got to fight. Right. I mean, and, and so many people places. coming from other places, other countries, like my family, you learn like, look, you got to be on that grind. You got to move, right? You got to do a lot of different things. And it gets to a place. And the other thing that comes with that, that I had to learn was asking for help, right? So I'm going to do it all. I can't really do it all. I'm going to mess up and then not ask for help. So, you know, I love being able to hear what you did and how you made that choice, because I think a lot of us need to do that. Yeah, marriage has taught me a lot of that, though. Too. I was going to ask you about that. So that, you just that, recently, that relatively, help, bro. <laughs> relatively recent, got married, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's it's not, speaking to that, asking for help. And like I said, marriage taught me that. It's not so much of just asking for help, because a lot of times we'll voice, yeah, I can use your help, but we don't make room for the help. And when you're used to having to do things yourself or having to, okay, I got it. I got it. Because people have failed you. You then take on this posture of, you know, being incapable of delegating and trusting. And so my thing is reset every day, begin a new trust, begin a new trust, establish your boundaries, but begin a new trust. So that it can, it can take you places that reveal to you the more of what you uh, you could accomplish that you probably never even gave thought to. But that marriage has taught me that, bro. <laughs> uh, marriage will teach you. And I love that you've been saying reset each day, right? Begin trust again each day, especially like when you're in a relationship, business, right? And all these other ways, if you can try, like, yes, there are some people you need to like, they can't get back in the circle. They've crossed you way too many times. They need to be out. But there's some other folks that we can say like, hey, you know what? Give them another chance. Give the situation another chance. Give yourself another chance. So I I'm curious, right? Uh, yeah. You have the song, you know, Why I Love You. And it's like, I just saw like, again, like every time I look, it's, I feel like it's another like 5 million downloads, 5 million views. It's like almost like 130 million like views on YouTube, which is crazy. <laughs> like, so tell me about that journey. Did you know or feel that this song was going to be that song? I always felt that if I was given the opportunity, I could be extremely successful. Um, I did not quite see it exactly the way that it has unfolded. Um, Shout out to your 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 native land. I go to Jamaica, April 2021. Bruh, why I love you is my passport. Why I love you is my credit card. Man, when I tell you, they love that song so much. 
But now I get to make a remix. Bro, well, I did do a uh well Sha- I don't think Shaggy's from Jamaica, but um but but we we did a Shaggy uh a reggae uh me- remix um to it. Um but bro, bro, I had no idea. And it feels so amazing. And you know what's crazy is this this song was written as a love letter to and from God. Because at that time, I didn't know true love. Like, I didn't know it yet. I had experienced having my heart broken, you know, or being let down from experiences of, of love. But really finding that love that just makes you feel Woo! I hadn't experienced that yet. I I knew my mama. Yeah. Always but mama. you know, it's always mama because that's that's the a man a man's first love. Um, and I knew God's love. And in my learning spiritually, I was like, yo, God love is the way we are to experience love, period amongst all of us. I know they separated and say Eros and Agape and, you know, Phileo and things like that. But I think the whole of God's love is the way we are to experience love. And I said, God, I want to write this love song, but I want to write it in a way that it inspires people to not only seek this love from one another, but also for people to embrace it for themselves, that self-love, that God love, and the love to one another. And bro, that song has, it won't, it won't stop. It won't stop. It won't stop. I am grateful. Stevie Wonder called it. I don't know what he saw, pun intended, you know, in, in the heavens. But he he said, this song is going to change your life. It's going to be a wedding love song for years to come. And Patti LaBelle and so many, so many greats have embraced it and, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And that, that, that's why I really appreciate one, just you being you and your willingness to to join me today. Just like we linked up, we it, we connected, and you're willing to be here, and you're telling your story coming from like your household, ten siblings, your journey, your craft, pouring into the picture, the you know the the other songs that you've been connected to, writing for you know think like a man too, and that changing your life, and then this song. But it's to me, it's all like, you know, if we were going to script it, it looks like part of the script. You've been yeah. doing the work, you've been pouring in. And yeah, you 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 wrote a song for God. And it's just blew up. You said something. You said it looks like it's it's all a part of the script. Most of the time, we when we are met with challenges in life, we want to abandon it because it doesn't feel like it belongs. But if we simply honor what it is, seek the lessons that it's teaching us now, it will show and prove in due time that it was a part of the making. The breaking was a part of the making and Bro, I'm encouraged just hearing this because, you know, there's there's transition. I'm experiencing transitions, career transitions, you know, in the middle of um, just figuring out what's next, you know, and, you know, I've launched this major hope um, experience tour and, you know, the major hope foundation and just really wanting to live the hope that I give. But At the end of the day, you know, this is, this moment is inspiring me. It's it's like saying, see, I told you, it's all a part of it. And and there's so much, right? Like, and I totally relate, you know, in my own life and the things that I've had to do, go through disappointments, heartbreak. And then when I said, when I take a step back, I'm like, (laughs) this has been a part of the plan, right? Like, and like, I know like everybody doesn't see it that way. Everybody doesn't believe it that way. But for me, I'm like, what if I had given up? What if I had quit? What what if I didn't just keep trying? 
And what put you in in this profession? What placed you here? Like, what made you say therapist? Yeah, yeah. The short of it is, my parents showed me the way because they were always there for people, always caring for people. But I wanted to be a medical doctor. Yeah. And college realized that wasn't the right fit for me. Shifted to psychology. And it still didn't really feel like the right fit until I got I went to my master's program and was able to pursue like working with couples. That was my first entry and men working with men. That was it. Like, and then from there, like as I started my career, one of the things that like has been revealed for me is that. I always felt like doing things with media, being a performer, I was in part of choirs, acting, all this other stuff. Uh, so media was always a part of my life. Yeah. I didn't fully accept it until I look back and I'm like, in 19 years of doing therapy and helping people in the office, I've also been helping people outside the office through media Yeah. for 19 years, right? So I would say to myself like, oh, you know, one of these days I want to do more with media. And then yeah. I got checked, right? Like I've been doing it from the jump. And so it, it's it's those paths, those decisions that allowed me to realize this is where I'm supposed to be and it's only expanding and there's more that's coming with it. And I'm grateful, even this being able to share these stories with people, I'm so thankful that people are saying, oh, that was so great. Or, this is so powerful. Uh, this is impacting my life. And I know what people are gonna say when they hear like your story and what you've shared today this is thought of like, yeah, it's all, it doesn't feel like the script. It doesn't feel like it's working out. But if I just lean in, hone my craft, do the work, trust and reset, it's going to work out. Bro, bro, it will. I, um, you, I, I shared with you um, uh, before, but I'll, I'll say it on this platform. Um, I lean into this particular definition of hope that I learned along the way, that hope is not the denial of reality. It's the commitment to believe greater is on the other side of it. Hope is not the denial of reality. It's the commitment to believe greater is on the other side of it. So I've learned I'm not pretending my circumstance ain't real. I'm not pretending my hardship, my struggle, my burden is not what it is. I'm just choosing that in the midst of this thing that I'm going to hold to the promise that will ultimately deliver in due time. And if I take true inventory and account of the history, I will find that every single thing that I thought I wouldn't get through, I got through. That's what we got to remind ourselves every time we face that new challenge and new obstacle. Absolutely, bro. So I know I'm great. I'm grateful for your time. And we're, uh, some questions I'd like to ask before we, we wrap up. So what are you working on now? Like, what is that thing? Or you, you talked about the, the tour you were on. And yeah. I, if I know you, you're, you got some other stuff that you're doing. So what, what are you working on now? I'll, I'll, re, I'll reiterate the tour for sure, because we're going to add some new cities. Um, we just finished the first leg of the major Hope Experience Tour. We do some that are uh, acoustic and some that are full band live. Um, I'm really excited about that because music and motivation are the methods. Hope is a message. It's really good. You get a concert and um, some healing in the midst of it. It's, it's so good, man. Um, I'm excited about that. Um, we're building some stuff with the Major Hope Foundation. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I do have some um, some movie uh, movie stuff that I've been a part of that um, one will be filming this month. Another is still just waiting in queue for when we get the release date. Um, uh, I'm just building new music. It's good. I love it's it. Good. 
I it's love good. It. It's special. It's special. Shout out to um, the amazing team, BOE and and uh, Calvin Span and all my team that has just really supported me in this journey. Um, it's some good stuff coming. Some that uh, probably the church will get really excited about, but it's going to make the world feel feel seen and loved. And that's what I've been gifted to do. So I'm just leaning in, boss. I lean in, man. And just like, like I said, I'm leaning into my ability to connect and with people of all backgrounds, but really leaders, entertainers, athletes and performers, people who are just sometimes they don't have anyone to talk to. But and you I'm get it. I, I, you giving me a little taste of your backstory. It's because you get it. Yeah. You actually are that left and right brain. Yeah. Yeah. Or you get it. So thank you because you can show up even, even fuller as in the profession and in the work that you do, because it won't seem linear. It'll definitely feel multifaceted. Like you can, we can give you anything and you can. I love it, man. I love being on set. Like, you know, long hours, whatever background, I don't care, but I love the process. I love the creativity of it. Just like I love like seeing an athlete, what he or she puts in to get to themselves to that next level. And so there's a way that I, I totally appreciate that sometimes people minimize like it, it's not easy like people put right. real work into it and they're real humans at the same time so uh, some other quick questions you've worked with some amazing people uh and you're doing some great projects now uh who is on your like wish list that you would love to work with uh whether musically or uh acting wise like who who would you want to collab with musically i want to collaborate i have five in particular. All right, I want to hear him. Mars. Nice. John Legend. <laughs> Beyonce for the hometown. Adele. Nice. And I I I've been back and forth with this, but I would I wouldn't mind uh working uh with Ed Sheeran. Um I think I think he's a very gifted dude. He gets it. I wanted to, at a time, do a duet with Carrie Underwood because um, I have some songs that are kind of country-esque. But uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, as far as um, acting, I I'll just say that I just I aspire to have my own TV show at some point. Um, yes, where I'm, I'm a star of a TV show. Um, I'm I'm hilarious by nature, man, um, and I'm not just well. Actually, I am saying it. I am saying I'm hilarious because I, if I laugh, oh, I'll think. <laughs> yeah. Who, who else do we need? Right. Um, but no. Um, and just in general, I have a feeling something special is going to happen with me and Oprah. So stay tuned. Stay okay. tuned. I was blessed to have a conversation with Miss um, Winfrey. Um, uh, in, in June, 2020, um, she called me and oh, Oprah will find, find your number. number. I just have a feeling something special is going to happen this year. Man, I'm happy for you, man. And I, and I believe that for you, man. And like with all that you're doing, all that you're saying, and, and I have some as- similar aspirations as well. From what my- are yours? From my own show, uh, yes. you know, like I have some, you know, on my big board over here, uh, you know, I have TV show ideas that I want to yeah. create. Uh, the other thing that I've been fortunate to do is to also consult uh, shows on, so help them with script review, mental health stuff, what they're actually putting out there. So oh, doing yeah. more of that, I've been able to do, you know, from Viacom and Nickelodeon under Viacom and some others want to be do, do more of that. And yeah, I, I got some books uh, that I'm working on, one in particular oh. right now. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I look forward to my conversation one day uh, with Miss Winfrey. So uh, I'm happy for you. You just, you know, you've set it up. Uh, you'll be just a, another person in my crew that I know who have had that conversation. So I'm only getting closer. You are. You are. I'm, I'm telling you to stay ready. Stay ready, brother. Oh, is, man. Stay ready. So Has last anybody of, ever told you you look like Dr. King? No. Dr. Martin Luther King? No, that was a new one, but maybe it's a haircut. Who knows? 
I, it could be that, but I, I kept feeling that the whole time. I'm like, this brother. <laughs> what, what's your lineage? Right, right, right. <laughs> so our right, last two questions. Uh, tell me, uh, what does mental wellness mean for you? Mental wellness is... Taking time to allow myself to feel, to deal, and to heal. Taking intentional time. That's mental wellness. Heal. Taking the time, it's so important. Taking the intentional time to feel, uh -huh. to deal, and to heal. Yeah. But none, none of that can happen without the intentional time. Got to start there. And last question, what mental wellness advice would you give to your younger self? And that could be as early as yesterday or way back when. I said it earlier and we happened upon it. The breaking is a part of the making. Mm -hmm. Trust it. It will come with no's, but there's always a yes. There's always a yes eventually. The breaking is a part of the making. Count it all joy. Oh, I, I really appreciate our conversation and what you've shared today, uh, your openness, your transparency your success. Um, uh, shout out to mama once again. And, you know, I, I just, I am excited for you on what is happening and what is coming and, and that we're connected. I mean, that's what this is yeah, brother. also real cool yes, we like, are. as we continue to grow. And one of the things I was thinking about that I'll, you know, I'll send to you later uh, is something that I've done called uh, First and Ten. It's I've been fortunate enough to be married 15 years and know my wife 20 plus years. And uh, I did this project called First and Zero. Helping uh, Couples to Get to Their First 10 Years of Marriage, where we talk through some stuff. So I'm just going to send that to you. Send uh, that to me. Listen to it, and I know it'll help you, and maybe it'll help some other people down the road. Uh, but most importantly, you know, major what you've done in your life, in your music, in your uh, acting in your ministry is just so powerful. And I'm grateful that you joined me here on Leapcast. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. Wow. What an incredible ride we just went on with another great member of the Leapcast community. I appreciate you listening and hope you got some tangible value from the episode. Please let us know what you think by leaving a comment, rating, and review. As always, please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. This is Dr. George James, and I'll see you next time.